All right, John, good to see you again, man. See you. I thought you'd have a man bun. I was expecting you'd have a man bun and be crawling around on the ground. I'm kidding, of course, but uh, movement seems to be something everybody's talking about. It seems to me that's a bit of a natural pendulum swing reaction to people that were getting a little too muscled up, kind of that wrestler, heavy weight cutting, big power um, sort of uh, approach to building a fighter. Is that accurate, the way it swings like that? It's accurate, that in CrossFit, where people were abusing their body and they were always getting injured. It's a lot of repetition, a lot of Olympic lifting, a lot of just a, a bunch of a bunch of things that they throw in their, their recipe and their stew and their bodies break down. They don't really get the results they need. So people probably said, listen, uh, it's working for a few fighters. Let me go and totally shift to that, you know, uh, that direction. And uh, they got totally into it. So now, you know, we talk a lot about fighting, but you build all kinds of athletes. And when you get the chance to build somebody up from a fit, fairly well-performing athlete to a super high-level athlete, what's the best way to do that? Well, you gotta take into consideration all the modalities and where your fighter or your athlete is coming to you. See, that, that's the thing is that I don't want to build a fighter. It's not me. I, I'm not helping them fight at all. I want to build the best athlete possible and the best athlete who can compete for five very, very explosive three-minute rounds. If, uh, sorry, five-minute rounds. Uh, three five-minute rounds. And if they're um, fighting for a title, obviously five. But we're looking at conditioning, but we need power, we need strength, we need agility. There's different different areas that involve um, addressing. Your athlete might be very, very powerful and have zero conditioning, and you might have to address a bit more on the conditioning side while still working on his power and still working on his you know, other aspects where it comes to agility and strength. But each fighter is different, each athlete is different, and you need to sort of work with what they're great at and build what they're poor at. So I'm gonna get you to show me a few things. Uh, what can you show me and what areas can we just address in a way that we can share with you? Well, any athlete that comes in here, whether it be a, a, a hockey player, fighter, it doesn't matter where you are, you want to build on your power uh, first in the program design only because uh, it drains the most of your, uh, has the biggest effect on your nervous system. So you want to get that out of the way. Then you're going to work on your strength and normally you would finish with your conditioning. Uh, there's agility in there, there's, there's skill work. Uh, we can couple that in there somewhere and on some days, uh, we'll do sort of like a metabolic sort of circuit where um, there's a bit of everything. It's, it's more high intensity uh, with the recovery based on. That's the, the biggest thing with training fighters is they're going to train like every other athlete, but their work to rest ratio in their conditioning needs to be different. So a football player has to be explosive for, let's say, a six second play. And they have 45 seconds to recover, breathe, get their air back. Um, and then they explode again. That's why football players are, are so powerful. They're built like that. They're just, they're specimens. Whereas uh, a mixed martial artist, a boxer, their work to rest ratio is negative. They rest for a lot less than they work. So they can't go balls to the wall all out crazy and then uh, expect to recover in a minute. So they have to be able to, the, the most important thing is, is almost an acyclical training where you're able to explode, but then recover maybe through active recovery, like um, footwork in, in a fight. Here you do sort of a shadow box or a ladder drill, but uh, that's the biggest difference between training a high-level hockey player and a high-level mixed martial artist. Well, let's do some power stuff, some strength stuff, and then finish up with whatever you want. Awesome. All right, thanks, yeah. man. All right, John, what are we doing here, and why are we doing it? So this is a regular box jump. What makes it different is it's not like CrossFit where you're jumping up, jumping down. We want to build power. So this is a plyometric. When you Olympic lift, it's triple extension. It's basically jumping with weight. So basically I load, I go hips, knees, and ankles, and I come up, okay? So it's the same idea, just there's no load. I bring my hands to the side, like I'm loading with a bar. I explode up, and I land soft. Okay, these two uh, kettlebells do not match. Do I get the tiny one and you get the big one? Is yeah, you get both. <laughs> All right, what are we doing? So a lot of time in, in any sport, you're gonna wanna have a lot of core stability. So what that means is if I'm gonna try and move you around, your spine is not meant to twist around in circles. So judo, wrestling, you wanna be very, very controlled here and not let me move you around. So what this is, is it's called a suitcase carry. What's great about it is you're gonna hold one heavy one. Usually it's meant to, to be with just one kettlebell where you're, you're holding your hand here or down. It's gonna be pulling you to one side. If you can't counterbalance and use your core to stabilize, you're just gonna fall over to one side. Sort of like when we do the anti-rotary, you're trying to stabilize your core. So here, I'm gonna give you both. I'm gonna give you a pink one just to hold it in the other hand. But really, when I'm watching you do it, I should see that both sides 
look exactly equal. So I shouldn't see which is the heavier one when you're on the way down there, which means you have perfect control of both sides. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a distance, figure from there to the end. When you get down there, put them back and come back with the other side. Yeah. And core tight, do not let it dominate you. I shouldn't see losing energy side to side. You're basically trying to stay as stiff as possible. Walk there, walk back, easy. I mean, I always like working with you. You're a good dude. I like you personally. But you have some twisted enjoyment out of making people push sleds. What, what is the story? Uh, bang for your buck conditioning, you can't get a better workout than pushing the sled. So either we do pull push, we do push push. For the hockey players, we do some crossover pushes. Um, it's probably the most complete because you get a lot of leg drive. So you can work power with it because you can go heavier. You can go a bit lighter and work some speed. You can uh, do it for a longer duration and work more conditioning and lactic acid buildup. You can do short bursts. You can use this thing and, and just load it in different ways where you can play around with it. You're going to use a TRX. You're going to walk and get some trip, uh, some um, uh, closed chain leg extension. And then on the way back, you're going to wrap it around and say sprint it back. You'll sprint it back one time. Thanks for everything, man. I really appreciate it. Great having you here.